Did you get hit by the train? <laughs> the locomotive don't believe. If it didn't get you, the caboose would. How many people actually understand there are no more cabooses on trains? So we don't know if it's new that. How many people in here actually know that I should be a locomotive engineer? Okay. When the cabooses were gone, I said, thank you, Jesus. Because in the average freight train, I'll just talk a little bit quickly about the average freight train that we run is around now 9,000 feet long. So you've got, you know, there's 5,280 miles in a, or feet in a mile. So they're just pretty long. And those caboose, in every type of caboose, there's, about, there's approximately 150 feet of slack in a train. So what, what an engineer would always tell the conductor when they would have an argument, you better sit down back there because you're getting ready to get hit. And if you're going 70 miles an hour, when 150 foot of slack runs in against a, like a brick wall, it's very painful for a conductor. The, uh, and there's a lot of conductors that wind up getting disability out of the row of that situation. Uh, veter veterinarian. veterinarian. Veteran. Is there any, is it, what side? Is there any American veterans in the room? If you would please raise your hand. Thank you very much for your service. Are there any... Uh, well, that, that's what I said, American veterans. The, I know Jimmy was, I think, working for the Gestapo one time. Yeah. Some of the I'm not quite sure. I understand that this legislative year, which is going to actually start on Monday, there's going to be uh, Senator Rob Sandridge is going to introduce a bill that says that it would be, I think it's mandatory to do the Pledge of Allegiance to American flag, every, at least one time a day. How many people agree with that? Thank you very much. I'm a big believer in that. We've got to, we've got to show, teach young children to have loyalty to the, to the American society. Last night, I had the opportunity to uh, view a uh, debate between Bill Ayers and D'Souza. How many, did any of you anybody else in here view that? You had to go online to do that. Very, very interesting to say the least. From what, what we would say the epitome of one side of the aisle from a liberal growing up in America to a conservative, a foreigner coming to the country and appreciating and having conservative values and appreciating what America actually is. We are not a land of perfection, but we are a, a land that attempts to right the wrong. I'll just put it that way. Okay. Is there anybody here that doesn't agree with term limits? I'd kind of like to see a hand up. Uh, okay, Richard doesn't agree with that. I the, have a question. Okay, Sharon's got a question. I can see in the big cities, the big counties, but don't they have trouble in other counties? A lot of them, where they go begging for people to take offices, and I'm not sure about that. I'm just asking. Not necessarily judges, but just general office holders. If you had uh, term limits in some of the counties, don't they have trouble getting people to do those jobs? And if they're term limited out. You've got a guy who'll do it, and then he's out. Then what do you do for the next term? Great question. We can't answer. Okay, but we're going to get somebody down here that can. Okay, we'll do that. Um, thanks for bringing that up. How many people have been watching High Noon Club videos online? How many people know about High Noon Club videos online when we do our guest speakers? Okay. If you go, we've got a Facebook page that's called High Noon Club. If you go to that Facebook page, every meeting that we're doing with our guest speakers, we're putting that online. Last week was a perfect example of that. Because here was what we want you to do. You not only attend the meeting, but when you leave here, tell your friends or other people to look. You can see what we discussed down here at High Noon Club online, so you can share that link with them so they can actually see that. I had literally i think five to six people asked me this week that they couldn't attend that they were watched or what going to watch that video that we did last week down here we had i think it was was a 200 and some guests on that it was almost 200 this morning when i checked okay it was almost 200 so there's almost 200 people viewed that video last week from what we did here so that's what we attempt to do is train educate or whatever and then allow the voter to make certain decisions based upon what you believe or the facts of whatever site you're going to take. Okay? So again, High Noon Club on Facebook, High Noon Club on Facebook, and you can share that link or see that link. Because a lot of times it will happen too. I'm very guilty of that. 
I'll miss a whole bunch of points. Some of these people are so in-depth in their facts and figures on certain issues that I just flat miss it. So I can go back and review, re-review what they actually had to say. So that's beneficial for me. Today what we're actually going to do, we're going to talk about a subject matter that I actually almost know zero about. And I'm almost embarrassed about it, but that's why we have a high new club. Okay, we're going to introduce the guest speaker right now. You ready? Sure. Okay, here we go. We're going to introduce the guest speaker and... Morning. <laughs> afternoon. It is afternoon. I'm Marcus. I'm a member of OCHEC, Oklahoma Christian Home Educators Consociation. People say, what's that mean? Consociation comes from a Webster's Dictionary back in the 1800s. That is a group of groups with like-minded ideas. Associations are groups of people with like-minded ideas. So, OCHEC actually is a group of homeschool support groups that have like-minded ideas. And what we want to do today is introduce one of our board members, Cindy Nikolai, who is our legislative liaison out here at the Capitol, does a great job. Uh, she has some talk about the uh, equal access thing that uh, Mr. Cleveland has proposed. Some pros and some pro and some cons about it. So, Cindy, floor is yours. Cindy, great round of applause from behind you. And then, just kind of briefly tell me, how much time do you think you need in your presentation? How much time do you yeah. have? Well, we got all day. We're going to be down here all day. So we can't shoot, but you can talk. Oh, okay. I'm not going even. Let's kind of do this. Let's do, let's, let's let her have about 40 minutes or so. Okay, about 40 minutes, 30, 40 minutes, however you want to do that. And then we'll have a bunch of Q&A with it. Okay? okay, I've got some other people that I'm going to bring in in the process and kind of give you guys a variety. And they just have to look at me all the time. Okay, great. Just as long as they don't have guns and run point in the direction of the other. <laughs> Actually, this is one of the few places I can walk in because I do have my my open carry. It's one of the few places I can walk in with that in my purse and not feel like everybody's looking if they see it that they're not going to freak out or something. So yeah, um, I am Cindy Nikolai and I have home educated my children since 1996. They are all since um, married and have children of their own. So I'm a granny with grandchildren that are going to be homeschooled. And that is the main reason that I am still in this right now. Even though I have no children at home myself that I am homeschooling, the face of homeschooling is very quickly changing. And if we do not remain vigilant in our efforts to protect it the way that it is right now, my grandchildren will not have those same freedoms that their parents had when they were homeschooling. So I just want to give you a little bit about homeschooling in Oklahoma. For those of you who are not aware of it, Oklahoma is the only state. Hi, how are you, Representative Reynolds? Good to see you. Oklahoma is the only state in the nation that has it written directly into our Constitution that we have the right to educate our children by other means. Okay, the state constitution does not use the term homeschooling. They say that we should educate our children by private, public, or other means of education. Other means has come to be been come to no be has come to be known as I'll get it out here in a minute as home education. Now we do not like to use the term home education in any language. Um, and Representative Riddles will tell you this too. I was just in his office the other day and said, can we strike this because we want to put other means of education to keep it consistent with what our state constitution says. And one of the reasons that we want to do that as well is because once the term home education gets thrown into a lot of legislative acts, then someone's going to want to define what is home education. And we want that definition to be ours, not the legislators or the government's definition, because they would definitely be, definitely be two different things. So we have the right to educate our children by other means. There's a difference between a right and a freedom. Do you all understand what I'm saying? There's a difference between a right and a freedom. And there are many times that legislators write a bill for us because it's our right to claim something. Um, Bobby Cleveland has a bill that was out in, uh, back in November, I believe it was, October or November, 
um, he was going to present that to you all as an equal access bill to, to let you know a little bit about what he's wanting to do in association with his um, zeal to get the OSSAA under control as well. Now we have absolutely nothing to do with the OSSAA. That is the Oklahoma State Secondary or Oklahoma Secondary Schools Activities Association. Because we are not allowed to participate within the public school system, um, we therefore have nothing to do with the OSSAA. Now, we do have a lot to do with Bill 1906, though, which is on the docket still for this year. And that bill was written with the intent to help homeschoolers. And this is where a lot of times things get sticky. Um, our rights can sometimes destroy our freedoms. Just because we have the right to something, or a perceived right to something, does not mean that that is going to be helpful to us. Does that make sense? We have the right to bear arms, but with that right and with that freedom comes responsibility. And as a result of that, the more laws that are passed for that right, the more it gets scrutinized and the more the regulations build up. Does that make sense? So we have to be very careful that we do not embrace something because of a perceived right and in the process destroy our freedom. 1906, the bill that, that Representative Cleveland was, was proposing is for equal access because he believes that homeschoolers are being discriminated against because we are not allowed to play public school sports. Now, it could, I could go for a very long time about that, simply because some of the comments that have been made, and, and he brought Coach Switzer in as his um, big gun to promote this idea of equal access. And Coach Switzer actually here said that um, the homeschoolers are not competent to play against the real competition or the best competition and that's how you really get good. My homeschool kids don't provide or that league wouldn't provide the competition as playing against Edmund North, Edmund Santa Fe, Jinx or Union. It just doesn't happen. I am a coach, I'm in the profession and I understand and know that. It doesn't make any difference because someone said but we have kids who have been picked up on scholarship for large colleges and universities and he said it doesn't make any difference I know the players that you are coaching and they cannot compete against these kids. I don't want to interfere with the homeschool organization. I just want my children, which is actually his grandchildren, to live within and under the constitutional law of Oklahoma to participate in extracurricular activities. There will actually very, be very few that will ever take advantage of this opportunity. My two children, or four or five kids, would because they are good enough to do it. This was Coach Switzer here at this microphone a few months ago. That was his reasoning for why we need equal access. Because our children are not good enough to play against the big guns, to play against real schools. My question to that would be, what are all the 2A, 3A, and 4A schools doing then? Are none of the children that are playing in 2A, 3A, and 4A public schools good enough either? Because none of them are playing against 6A, Santa Fe North, or Santa, Ed, Edmund Santa Fe, or Jinx, or Union. So are you putting all of those students who do not live within a metropolitan area and attend a 6A school? Does that mean that they're not good enough either? In fact, one of our homeschool teams recently played a 5A school and beat them. We have students who have been picked up for scholarships. One of our teams recently, this was the one that played the 5A school, there's three seniors on that team. One of them was picked up with a full ride scholarship to, I think it was TCU. I'm not sure exactly which one it was. We currently have on the OU roster a student who plays quite well for OU. 
We have students who are very, very qualified, and our teams are very qualified. Um, the fact is that most of our schools that they are, when Bobby Cleveland took this bill to the committee last year, he said that our homeschool students need to have these opportunities just the same as our public school students do. And it's not fair that we discriminate against them because simply the fact that they homeschool. Um, number one, we're not being discriminated against, and we do not want to be set up as being discriminated against because that puts us as a special interest group. We are not a special interest group. We are not asking for that. We do not want that. Yes, there may be four or five children within the state that might want to participate in that, but why would we go to, to the process and through the process of making legislation, the money that's involved in it, and everything else for four or five children. That to me does not make sense and make wise use of our tax money that's being put out for things like this. Um, another thing is, what about when, when Cleveland was in that meeting again, um, the, I'm trying to think, Cootie and Cootie, asked him a question said, are you aware that the homeschool organizations have their own teams and leagues that they play with? And he said, well, but we're talking about eight-man football, and eight-man football is not real football. Okay, so the rural areas that you're talking about, these kids don't have the opportunities to go play. They're going to go to a two-way school that has what? eight-man football. So if all we're going to do is open up the doors for them to go play eight-man football in a public school that's not real football, why are we making legislation for it? Does that make sense? So there's a lot of questions. Another thing that we have asked over and over and over is how is this going to be implemented? If equal access was actually implemented and a law was passed for it, how are you going to do that? And Mr. Cleveland has over and over again Emphasize, I do not want to regulate homeschooling. Do not want to regulate. We do not want this. There's not going to be any regulation that's just going to be, you're going to just be able to walk in and play. There's not going to be, well, number one, it's not that we're against regulation because anytime you're walking into the public school and you're using their funds and their, their equipment and everything, the government has the right and responsibility to regulate that, right? Because it's their funds that they're that you are using. It's our funds. It's our funds. It's well, funds. I understand that, but the Bible says to render under Caesar what is Caesar's, and once Caesar gets it, it's no longer yours. Does that make sense? Theoretically, I agree that it is our funds and it's public money that we have a right to say what is being done with it. But when it all boils down to it. If I give my child an allowance, I expect them to spend it responsibly. I expect for it to be spent responsibly. And the government will, whether we agree with it or not, make sure that any funds that they give are being spent the way that they see fit. That's, and, and you're right, that's not necessarily responsible. I cannot tell you that the government is going to spend it responsibly at all. Um, in fact, most of the time I would just say it's not being spent responsibly. Um, and that's one of the reasons why we want to stay completely out of anything that has to do with that because we don't want their ideas of responsibility imposed upon us. But Mr. Cleveland has said several times that he does not want that, he does not want regulation. But when he was asked here, he said, I'm definitely not in favor of any type of legislation that has to do with homeschooling, and I would never support something that interferes with the homeschoolers, period. And the question was asked, well, then what do you want us to do? And he said, well, on the homeschool portion of it, we've got to figure out how to do the homeschool first. And if this goes forward, then, you're going to, then we're going to have to figure out some rules and regulations to go along with it. So we can't say there's not going to be any rules and regulations and then say we have to figure it out. What we're looking at is we do not like open legislation that just says here we want to give this to you 
but we don't know how we're going to do it. Let's pass the law, then we'll figure it out. We want to know the answers first. How are you going to do this? How is it going to be implemented? Who is it going to affect? Who is going to pay for it? What are the regulations and rules going to be? Let us know that before you pass a law. Like Obamacare. Yeah, like Obamacare. Hello? We're just going to pass this. This is going to be good for all of you. But we don't know how we're going to do it. Let's figure it out first. Not after the fact when it can't be taken off. Uh, sure, it can be taken off, but how many times has something been repealed? Yeah. Just saying. So as far as the homeschool is concerned, we just want to be left alone. We're the only group, pretty much, that comes up to the state capitol that walks into the legislator's office that says, we don't want anything. We don't want the money. We don't want anything that goes along with it. All we want is to be able to do the job that we're doing because we're doing it well. Now, for those of you who might not know, homeschoolers have very, very good statistics. Um, I left those back there in my thing. I have some great homeschool statistics that we are more civically involved. The majority of homeschoolers always vote in the elections. Um, we are more apt to get college degrees or start our own businesses. That doesn't mean we're perfect. I can guarantee you there are some weird homeschoolers out there too. I'm just saying, there's some weird homeschoolers out there. And there's some, yeah, this gentleman says there's some weird public schoolers too. Um, and there are, but that, that has nothing to do with my choice of education. If a person is going to be odd, they're going to be odd regardless of where they educate or how they educate their children. Thank you so much. So homeschooling, just to give you a few facts on homeschooling, homeschooling, what we consider homeschooling is parent-led, parent-funded, home-based education. That means it's privately funded. We do not take any government funds for education. We do it all ourselves. And it is an age-old tradition. It's an educational practice that 10 years ago appeared to be the cutting edge of alternative education. It is becoming now a designer education. And a lot of people are confusing home education, true home education that's parent-led, parent-funded, with virtual schools. Virtual schools, by state law, are not home education. The virtual schools are public schools at home that you enroll your children in a local public school. Actually, don't you have to be, have to be a local public school? I can live in Idabel and enroll my kids down in, or Idabel's down here, enroll my kids in Hebner. Okay? Because that's virtual. You do not have to live within the same district, but you still have to get a transfer. But that's enrolling them in public school. It is not homeschooling because you still are using all the public school curriculum, you're using the public school teachers, you're using the public school everything. It is not public school. Where school is taking place does not designate what type of education it is. Does that make sense? Just because you're sitting at home does not mean you're doing public school. Um, Coach Switzer uh, brought out that his and I'm not sure if it's his daughter or if it's his son, because the first time I met with him, it was his son. The second time I met with him, it was his daughter. So I'm really not sure who it is that he thinks is homeschooling. But the one that he talked about here was using Veritas Academy. Veritas Academy in Norman is a private Christian school. It is not homeschooling. The fact that they choose to only do private school within their brick and mortar facility three days a week and then send the kids home to do their homework two days a week is just their choice of how they're implementing their school days. They are, by law, a registered public, I mean private school. So when you register your children with Veritas Academy, you're actually registering them in a private school. So it's not even actually homeschooling. Veritas Academy has its own athletic director. They have all their own athletic teams. Everything that is available to them right there 
But yet Coach Switzer says, that's not good enough. I want my kids in Norman High School. That's the whole issue, is that the football issue is the, pardon me if I offend, but the little G God of the school. And if my kids can't play in the very, very best, then I'm going to do something so that they can get where I want them to be. That is not reason to make legislation. That is a choice that most parents, when they choose to homeschool, that is a choice that we make. My son played baseball all through Little League until he got to the midgets. And at that point, even the Little League teams would not allow him to play on the summer team because it was focused toward the public school so that they could start training their public school team during the summertime. It's all about the sports. But I will tell you that there is so much more than sports. There is so much more than sports. And we are not in favor of an equal access legislation. We are not in favor of that at all. I didn't say we were not in favor of equal access. If equal access were granted by the OSSAA, that would be a totally different story. But legislation that forces the schools to accept us when they do not want us is a totally different game. Totally different game. We have been told by multiple coaches, by multiple parents, more than, more than coaches, the parents do not want us there because if our children excel as homeschoolers and they get put on the team, and little Johnny, who goes to school at the local school, does not get to play over a homeschooler, who's going to be upset? Yeah, mom and dad are going to throw a fit because what is that homeschooler doing? And when that gets, we get negative feedback and negative publicity because of things like that, it is not worth it. It is not worth it. We are not an enemy to public school. We are completely parental choice. We believe that parents have the right to choose whatever educational method is best for their family. And if it's public school, then you go for it. And you be the best public school parent that you can be. If it's private school, then you put your kids in private school and you be the best private school parent that you can be. And if it's homeschooling, then the same thing applies. We are for parental choice of where children need to go, according to the parents' ideas, okay? So it's not that we're against the equal access. We're against any legislation that would force it, because legislation breeds regulation, period, end of story. And we are not willing to open ourselves up to that, because there are too many unanswered questions too many unanswered questions. If they could answer all the what ifs beforehand, and we had a guarantee, but we all know that in the government there are no guarantees. There are no guarantees. Just because a legislator does not have the intent when he or she writes a bill does not mean that that's not going to be interpreted tomorrow by someone else differently. There are no guarantees, and because there are no guarantees, we cannot afford to take that risk. It is way too high. Currently, Oklahoma does not have any laws on docket regulating home education. We are one of about five or six states that fall into that category, and we have no laws, and we want to keep it that way. We have great accountability. We have a OCHEC holds two homeschool conventions every year. And at these conventions, we offer over 70 continuing education workshops for parents to help them to be better parents, to be better teachers, to understand how to teach a child that has learning disabilities, how to teach math. What is the best way to teach a kinesthetic learner? 
How do I teach the child that is super visual? Then we have multiple opportunities that we offer for people to become the best homeschool parent that they can be. And we take that very, very seriously. Are there some who fall through the cracks? Absolutely. There are always going to be some who fall through the cracks. But I can guarantee you the percentage of children who fall through the cracks in homeschooling is minute compared to the number of children who are falling through the cracks in the public government schools. We don't do everything perfect. I will be the first to tell you. I am not a perfect mom. I am not a perfect parent. I was never a perfect teacher. There was only one of those in history that I know of. And I am not him. We make mistakes, but most of the time, we are very quick to try to change it and to make it better. What I would like to do is to let you guys see some of the students who are actually involved in our homeschool sports organizations. So if I could get some of you guys to come up here. Tiffany um, Davis, if you want to come up and bring your kids. Tiffany Davis, um, her husband is the president, I believe, of the Patriots Football Association. Yes. And they have children that have been involved in this for a long time, and I would like to let them have a, a couple words. And if it's okay, if you have questions that you want to ask them, let them answer the questions. Hi, I'm Tiffany Davis. Uh, this is Ben Davis. He's in ninth grade. Christian Davis, he's in 10th grade. And Adam Davis, he's a junior. And they've been with uh, the Patriots football program, oh, uh, several years now. What, how many years have you been, Adam? Four. Four years. And Christian actually is also with the Broncos baseball team, which is uh, the homeschool baseball team, and he's been with them since sixth grade, I think. Does anyone have any questions? I don't know if we're going to actually convince them to speak on their own without a question. Do you have a question? The question's right hand. Okay, no question. But I do have a, I do have a comment. There's one on the question for the word. All right. I can see it, but I can't hear I you. I have a question for you. That's a joke. Okay, hold on just a second. Uh, when you're done, uh, can I have this jacket? That's a common thing. I love those jackets. You got to earn that You do? Okay, question. I think when you got a chance to ask a question, you ought to ask one. Uh, how would you compare the level of competition that you are involved in with your... Uh, in your uh, athletic association and compared to, say, uh, public schools? He, he said he's never played on a public school team. Uh, I, I'll try to answer that. Um, the, oh, go ahead. No, no go ahead. You go ahead. Do, will you make your comment and we'll go to the next question. Okay. Um, the Patriots have been, uh, well, we've had 12 seasons. Um, we, this is our, for three years, we have been members of the Oklahoma Christian Schools Athletic Association. Um, and so we mostly play private schools. We do play a few public schools that are smaller schools. Um, and because we mostly play private schools, we mostly play eight-man ball um, because that's what the private schools play. When we do play a school that plays 11-man football, we play 11-man. So we actually play both. So I would say the ratio is maybe uh, eight games, eight-man, and three or four games, 11-man. I don't know if that's important to any of you, but just to address what uh, Mr. Switzer was saying. And as far as the level of competition, um, we're competitive at our level. So no, we do not play uh, 6A schools, um, but we are competitive at our level as parts of the Oklahoma Christian Schools Athletic Association. 
And we did very well this year, we did very well last year, and we did very well the year before that. Um, and we did very well the year before that, and those are the only years I can speak for, um, because that's how long we've been with the team. And uh, we, we had 12 All-State players last year, um, which was the largest number of All-State players from one team in our association. And we made it to the playoffs this year. Uh, we won the first game, and we didn't win the uh, championship, but we won the first game. And same last year, we won the first game, and we did not win the championship. But we definitely made it to the playoffs. And uh, so I'd say we're competitive at our level. An answer right. to your question. question. Your name's sir, Paul. Uh, Cindy, this is probably for you, or could be for you, you as well. Uh, I, one, I support your position. That's number one. But let me run a hypothetical uh, and get your response. Uh, my son graduated CHA and he got a scholarship to play uh, tennis at OBU. Now, had my son's sport been football or basketball, something really big, and he was really a great athlete, what is so wrong with me as a parent that for the last two or three years of my kid's education, transferring him to a public school. I mean, at some point in time, these kids are going to go to college, so we're not going to shelter them forever. And if, if public education is as good as I think it is, and homeschooling is as good as it is, then they should, or better, then they shouldn't, shouldn't be a deficit. And if there is a deficit in the public system, why can't the parents supplement that education? I don't see how the kids suffer. If the kid's going to be a great star, you know, and, and have maybe a professional career, what is so wrong with the last couple of years going to a big 6A school? I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think a lot of people do that, but a lot of people do the opposite. A lot of people attend, their kids attend public school, and then for the high school years, they pull them out because that's the years when they're having a more negative influence. So, but really, that's not the issue here. You're talking about choice. We all have that choice. No one criticizes anyone else's choice for public schooling, private schooling, homeschooling, absolutely. But that is absolutely not the issue. I mean, to answer your question, that's just not the issue that we're discussing right now. Uh, the issue that we're discussing is do we want there to be legislation that states homeschoolers have a right to play for a public school team, right? So that's a completely different question. But let me kind of propose it back towards you, too. By you denying that, aren't you also denying certain homeschoolers the right to have that option of choosing to? Am I denying my child? No, not yours, not yours. Some other parent that oh. homeschools, their right to access the system. Well, that family doesn't have the right to access their, that system. They can put their kids in public school. This is really an issue of having your cake and eating it too. Okay. You, we make our decisions and we make the decisions that is best for our family and home education for our family is the best decision. So we have to weigh all the pros and cons. Barry Switzer's family needs to decide is it more important for their kids to play football in the public school system then if that's more, if that's what's important to them, then they need to put their kids in the public school system. I mean, that's absolutely their right. To attend a private school and use the public school system, that's having your cake and eating it too. Really, that's trying to make the laws of the land revolve around you. Question. Yes, my name is Harold Hodges. I'm not qualified to be asking what I'm going to be asking, but here I stand in here. <laughs> Uh, and saying that our schools here like a whole lot to be desired and they're not up to par, but it looks like to me now, here we come here for home school, we've got the athletes up here. Looks like to me we have, he makes, he's got A's and he's got B's and he's got C's or something. You know, education, uh, there it is, reading, writing, and arithmetic. Absolutely. And then we pay ball after we've uh, learned how to read, write, and do those stuff. Well, and you're absolutely right. And my junior here is uh, enrolled in concurrent enrollment for just one course 
at OSU to uh, accumulate college hours at the same time as his high school hours um, and to kind of get his feet wet for college. But, you know, you know, school's only been in session for a couple of weeks, but he's doing very well and he does have good grades. So you're right. I mean, grades absolutely, whether, no matter what education you have, come first. Follow, follow, follow the question, but let him, let him finish the statement. One thing that I've often wondered, I know lots of parents, including um, myself here, I suppose I don't have any kids anymore, but uh, qualified to teach. How do we know parents are going to be qualified to teach? We've got teachers that aren't even qualified to teach. And how do you go around here from home to home, you know, yeah, I believe you'll do it, and no, you can't teach over here. How, how are you going to control that? Well, well, the problem we got with that question, you know, is that's getting off the track here a little bit. So okay, the uh, but let's stay with the let's stay with the with the bill with the bill and let's not get off here. Now let's so don't answer that. Okay, let's go to the next question. I have a really good answer. I don't keep it. My name is Jim and I have a granddaughter that uh, has played ball. She's in public schools. They're toughing it out, but she also plays league. And let me tell you, the league teams are 100% better than the school teams. The parent coach teams are great. Well, here's the question. When Coach Switzer <clears throat> was here last time, and he was talking about how weak our homeschool teams were and how they needed to have the ability to be able to get in and have somebody toughen them up, the question was posed to him, sir, if you are so concerned about your grandchildren, why don't you coach the homeschool team? You know what his response was? How much is it going to pay? So you can see where his concern lies. It's not really that he wants his grandchildren to be the best. It's whatever's going to pad his pocketbook the most. That was his response. How much does it pay? If you really, and that's the thing with homeschool parents and even homeschool grandparents, they are willing to do whatever it is they have to do to make their children and give their children the best education that they can receive. I owned a business when I started homeschooling. My husband was on the, the local school board. I sold my business so I could go home and be with my children because they are the most important thing that I can do in my life. And I have three children Two of them graduated from college. One of them married a high school, or not a high school, but a, a homeschool girl who's standing right back here. She was also homeschooled. My son, who I'm talking about, um, went to Oklahoma Wesleyan University. Did he excel? Was he cum laude? No, he's dyslexic. In the public school, they wanted to push him aside and put him into the, into the T1 learning all the way through and not even, not even test him. We pulled him out, tested him, found out what the problem was, and then focused on that area. Focused on his education and how is the best way to get him to learn. He graduated and did internships with the U.S. Marshals. I'd say that's a pretty good accomplishment. Okay, let's stay on subject matter. Subject matter, not how good homeschoolers are, because I think everybody in this room would agree homeschoolers achieve at a very high level. But let's talk about the bill and this initiative we're talking about. Question. We got a question. Okay. You ready? Well, actually, my question is. About okay, no, no. Talk to the audience, not to me. <laughs> you just said that we have to stay on the bill, but I, I want to. But my question has to do with you do not want any regulation. You want to just. Stay away from that. So then, uh, that means that you would not agree with any bill uh, that would be with vouchers or, or uh, tax credit or any kind of a rebate or anything. You don't want to have anything to do with any of that. Is that right? That, that is right. And actually, Mike Reynolds has a bill that, that looks on the surface like it would be perfect um, because it is getting rid of the ad valorem. It's, it's making homeschoolers exempt and pri private school students exempt from the ad valorem tax. He did some things right there um, because one, he did not specify homeschoolers only within that bill. We do not want any bill that specifies homeschoolers, but he did it wrong, sorry, Representative Reynolds, <laughs> um, because he mentioned homeschoolers. 
If we're going to have anything that is going to give a credit, do it for everyone across the board. Because once you get put into a bill as this is specifically for a purpose, then you have other people that are going to be looking at it, they're going to be scrutinizing it. How is it going to take place? How many of you all in here have children in the public school right now? Is there anybody in this room that wants children in the public school? <laughs> And I am too. I do not have children in the public school system either. I have grandchildren, but the point is I myself, personally me, do not have children within the public school system. So are we going to let all of you all who have no children in the public school system out of the ad valorem tax as well? Yes. <laughs> now to me that would be the answer. Let's just get rid of the ad valorem tax altogether and then we don't have to worry about who it's for and how it's going to be implemented and who is going to regulate and who's going to say. Because once something like that comes along, you're going to have to ask the question, how do I prove I'm homeschooling? Who do I turn this information into? What kind of what kind of other agency is going to have to be set up in order to maintain that and, and keep up on it? There are too many questions that even though it looks like an absolute great bill, and when you first read it, you think, wow, this would be really cool. But then we have all those other questions that are unanswered, and we don't know how to answer them. No one knows how to answer them. And so as a result, then, yes, we have to say we can't support it just simply because we, there's too many unanswered questions. Okay, so your life is in imminent danger here on pre warning okay? Because Mike Reynolds, Representative Mike Reynolds, is going to ask you a question. I know. But before we do that... I've talked to him okay, already. So. Before we do that... And he's a good guy. We're going to relieve these professional athletes to sit down here, because I know you get tired. And whatever you do, do not get rid of that jacket, because that jacket won't spin in your Thank you guys for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now I'm warning you, your life is now in imminent danger, so get ready and listen to the question. That's okay. Um, yeah, I'm agree? packing, it's okay. Would you agree that there are many homeschoolers that don't agree with your leadership's assessment of what would happen if we uh, did many of these programs? There are maybe three or four. We had this same thing that came up several years ago at the Capitol, and we did a down town hall forum on it. There were only over 700 homeschoolers within that town hall, and two people stood up in favor. Over 700 in the town hall, and two people stood up in favor of it. So as far as statistically, I would say that the majority of homeschoolers know they recognize the risk and are not in favor of that type of legislation. Well, that, that was kind of a good, good. You're going to have to come this way with the street. You can come over here and share with That's me. All right. no, that, was, that was kind of a good way of deflecting the question. If there were only 700 people at the forum, are you telling me there's only 700 homeschoolers in the state of Oklahoma? I don't think so. There's thousands and thousands, and many of them would disagree because we homeschooled for 20 years, and we disagree. So wouldn't you agree? There's many that disagree. I would agree that there are some who disagree, but they're not the majority by any any, any speak of the word. And as far as the number that were in the, the forum, we can only, that was two different forums that took place, and you can only fit so many people in the room at the governor's blue room in the Capitol, and so we had as many as we could that were in there and they were flowing out into the hallway. Does every single homeschooler come to Capitol Day? No, they do not. Well, let me do this. How many association, homeschooler associations in Oklahoma? I cannot tell you that. Are I there more than one? There are probably 40. Okay, there's 40 associations. You're one of 40. Right? Is that what we're saying? Okay. My, my other question is, are you planning on having a push to make sure that homeschool teams don't participate, participate against public school teams in any more sports next year because we're against equal access? If the public schools will allow them to, and there are several public schools that do allow uh, homeschool teams to play against them. I just, I mentioned one this morning, they played against a 5A team. The problem is with the OSSAA and the way that they have it, that depends on whether it's a scrimmage, they only have a certain number of games that they can play. If they go over those games, then they get penalized, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So all of that falls within the OSSAA. But if a, if a homeschool team wanted to play against a, a public school team, go for it. 
we're not against that at all in any way shape or form I think my point is if a homeschool team wanted to play against a public school team and they weren't allowed to because of OSSAA rules, this bill might remedy that situation so that every homeschool team that wanted to participate could well, do that. Isn't that the purpose of the bill? Not really. The purpose of this bill is strictly to give homeschool families access to the public school on an individual basis, not on a team basis. And that's a totally different thing because there, I will tell you, about 12 years ago, homeschoolers were allowed to participate within the OSSAA. We were given access and, and had been since, since its inception, okay? But about 12 years ago, the parents were getting ticked off because homeschoolers were winning all the events. <laughs> Now that is, that is the honest truth. The homeschoolers were winning the events, especially when it came to music competitions in Tri-State and Enid. They were winning all the events and the parents said, this is not fair. All those homeschoolers do is sit around in their pajamas all day long and practice. <laughs> and so because of the way the OSSAA is set up, they took it to their membership. Should we allow homeschoolers or should we not? Their membership, which is the public schools within Oklahoma and a few private, the membership itself voted that homeschoolers, because we were winning everything, could no longer participate within the OSSAA competitions. So we were not against participation. And like I said earlier, if we would be allowed back in to participate through the OSSAA without legislation, being forced, we would not be against that. I have spoken with Ed Shapley on numerous occasions. Ed is a good man. Okay, we, well, I do not know who Ed Shapley is. Ed Shapley is. is the president of the OSSAA. And he said, I said, Ed, come on, work with us here. And he said, Cindy, I, I am one person. I don't control that. That is the membership, and the membership will never go back on that. They do not want you in there. Question. And it's because we're so weak Question. that we can't compete. Question. Reynolds talked about the uh, disagreement between homeschool. What are the three yeah. top things people disagree with? On. He mentioned, he mentioned disagreements. What are the di disagreements? Is a question for Representative Reynolds? Well, she should know me both oh. either one. Okay, what are the disagreements? You know? Between the homeschool home organization and different homeschoolers. Home um I honestly we don't have major disagreements in, in all reality. There will be one or two people like and, and Representative Reynolds was correct in saying there are some people who disagree, but there's one or two. We get, as far as OCHEC is concerned, if we put out something, a legislative alert that says, this is a bill, and we tell what our side of it is, but we do not ever tell people, oppose this bill. We tell people, you call your representative. If you agree with it, then you tell them to go for it. If you disagree, then ask them to back off. Okay, that's the way we approach it, because people have a right to make those decisions for themselves. We give them the information and let them make the choice of whether they want to oppose it or whether they want to support it. 90% of the time, or, or more, we do not get any emails saying, why are you doing this? I think that last year when we opposed the bill, we had maybe one scathing email about how horrible we were because we were, and I, um, I hesitate to say this, but the, the language that was used in it and the grammar and everything made me think, was it somebody that is not homeschooled that's writing this? <laughs> because it was, it was just not a very well-written letter that was in opposition of Question. us opposing it. Question. My name is Mike. As yeah. Cindy, I, I'm a little confused about where your position is on this 1906 House bill from Bobby Cleveland. Are you for it or against it? We are against any legislation that would enforce homeschoolers or force public schools to allow homeschoolers in. So we are against 1906 because it is it is forcing homeschoolers to be accepted by the public school through legislation. As written? As written. All right. Now then, if 
you were able to sit down and draft the whole thing to where it was happy for you all as far as the homeschoolers it had all the rules and regulations and everything you could live with that would that be i don't know that that would ever with? happen um simply because once one if if the homeschoolers are happy who's going to be unhappy the public schools are going to scream like a pig stuck under a gate i can just i'm a farmer sorry i just said this came to me why why should the public schools be so adamant about homeschoolers and and people taking care of their own kids it sounds to me and from from past experience that i've dealt with with uh, families that have uh, are homeschooling their kids are heads above the public school system and that's why. what's wrong with it that's why, why. Should, why should they be uh, against that i don't that's a very good question but most of the time that is why because um we have had parents who were upset and that which is why we got taken out of the ossaa because our kid our children were excelling our children were excelling and they did not like that because they made their children look bad and we weren't up there in your face we just show up and we get what we get we do what we do um okay. but there's we're, something we're, getting, we're kind of getting into subject matters very subjective so let's kind of next question Hello, my name is Adam Pugh, and actually I have two things. The first thing is an encouragement for you. I want to tell you to keep fighting the good fight that you believe in. And the reason why I say that is because people don't trust their government. And as soon as we open the door to allow a piece of legislation to start to tell our families how to raise their kids and what to do with their kids, we have opened Pandora's box to allow the government to regulate us into tyranny. And I believe that. Amen. The second question I have for you, because I believe that problems can be solved on the most basic levels in our communities. Can we not allow school boards in each individual public school district to decide if they're willing to accept homeschoolers into their athletic programs? That is actually the way that it was before we were kicked out of the OSSAA. It was up to each individual school district to allow or not allow participation. And there were some school districts that were very, very friendly to home educators. And some of them were actually very, very hateful um, to home educators. So it just depends on what district that you live in um, as to whether the participation was actually allowed or not. Um, and that is a good question, but that, that was the way it, it was in the past. So, and it worked, but unfortunately, we who don't, aren't able to compete were kicked out because we were too competitive. Question. Does Arnie Duncan have any good ideas in education for your children or grandchildren? <clears throat> because he is the uh, the head of education in the United States of America. Mm -hmm. And he sits under another leader that many of you would probably disagree with. And to help you frame the context politically and spiritually around what's at issue in Mike Reynolds' bill and uh, and any other bill uh, that Bobby Cleveland would try to craft is uh, a reflection on the, was the 1910, uh, the bill that uh, was instituted in America to, uh, to tax only the richest 1%. Was that well written? Was that bill well written, was that bill well written, well written on the federal income tax? Mm -hmm. Okay, we're getting near, we're kind of getting on chase here. I kind of want to stay on this athletic the uh well, however I, let's do let's do about one or two more questions okay i would like done. to actually bring another person up here um robin works if robin would come up robin is another trustee on the ocheck board but he is also very involved in robotics and the homeschoolers well, are more than the athletics first, it can it i is, pat you down first robin you got it down okay yeah okay he's okay so you can go to the podium there is there are so many opportunities that homeschoolers have, and that's why I wanted some of these people to come up here so that you could see what type of, of opportunities we do have and how okay. well we are doing. Well, let's them. remember this too. And in, this fair, is, in fairness to homeschoolers, yes. you've already said there's 40 different associations of homeschoolers in Oklahoma. You're, you're in the voice of one. 
Another question, I would have a technical question for you, would be, that's not right? Robin will address that issue. Okay, but my question, would they differ, let's say there's 20, whatever, how many associations, does, you, does all those associations ever meet collectively at any one time in Oklahoma? Yeah. So just to be clear, uh, my name is Robin Zwartz. I'm a trustee on OCHEC, uh, just like Cindy is. Um, when we said that there was, say, 40 or 50 organizations in Oklahoma, what we were really talking about is support groups. And so when we talk about OCHEC, OCHEC is a state organization. So those 40 or 50 uh, support groups that are out there are all members. They're the pieces of our consociation. So when we talk about OCHEC, as far as a statewide organization that is uh, supporting homeschooling freedom in the state of Oklahoma, there's only one. So, yeah, and, there, and those groups are affiliated with us. Again, that's the consociation part that Marcus uh, defined for you earlier. So, uh, so just to be clear, when we're talking about statewide organizations that support homeschooling, OCHEC is the only one. Those other 40 groups that we talked about are very related to us, and we actually do uh, meetings with them once a year where we all get together and talk about homeschooling issues. But again, it's their meeting under, kind of for all intents and purposes, our umbrella uh, when we when we do that. Does that answer your question? Yeah. There's mine. Any other okay. questions? Okay. So what I wanted to talk about was, uh, Cindy brought me up here because of my, my involvement in robotics. Um, uh, I am the uh, father of eight kids, six boys, of which... Uh, Six of my kids right now are on robotics teams. And so, to be honest, when I watched the video uh, of, of Coach Switzer and the, uh, the issue with 1906, um, I, I actually, my hackles kind of got up, just to be perfectly blunt. Um, and the reason is, is because two different issues. Number one, the fixation was on football. Like, that's the only thing going on in schools. <coughs> I'm sorry, but my kids don't play football and I don't care, okay? I don't care anything about football. The second piece of that was it was very fixated on 11-man football at very big schools, of which there's just not, not that many in the state of Oklahoma. I went to a public school uh, through the seventh grade, Highland East, played on the football team there. I then switched to a, a private school, played uh, football on a private school. My private school played public school. We only played eight-man. None of the schools that I was that I attended and or played against were big enough to have an eleven man football, and and that whole conversation basically said, ah, that's not real football. That doesn't matter. And so it's like we wiped out eighty percent of the kids in the state of Oklahoma in one fell swoop. Those people don't matter. What we're really focused on is this over here. So that was my that was my first issue. My second issue was uh, again this fixation on we're talking equal access and we're very fixated on football. But there's lots of kids that do other things. I mean, there's other sports. We have football, we have basketball, we have baseball. My kids actually participate on robotics teams. Those robotics teams, matter of fact, two weeks from today, uh, or two Saturdays uh, from now, will be at Swasu out in Weatherford competing against probably 25 public school robotics teams from around the state. And so there's a lot more to this bill. The minute we start talking about equal access, the, we will seriously open Pandora's box because it's not just about football. The minute you start talking about extracurricular activities and saying, well, if, if the public school is going to do it, then well, we got to let these kids in or we have to uh, uh, you know, support, support homeschoolers going in and taking public funds, Pandora's box is open at that point. And what so aptly said uh, by this gentleman right here is the minute that we allow the the minute that we force the public school system to allow homeschoolers to come in and utilize their facilities and their resources, there is going to be accountability. There has to be accountability. I will take off my OCHEC hat and stand up here as a taxpayer and say to Representative Mike Reynolds, who happens to be my representative, um, who I voted for just for the record. <laughs> That was a wise decision. <laughs> um, that I will say, anytime the government forces people to do things, there must be accountability. As a taxpayer, if the government is going to take my money and allow someone else to use it, I expect that to be accounted for. As a taxpayer. Please. 
make sure my money's spent. So now I'll put my homeschooling hat back on. I don't want to be accounted for. Mm -hmm. That's the fundamental issue. When we get down to brass tacks, what Bill 1906 is about, from our perspective, is about freedom and protecting the most free state in the United States. Oklahoma, bar none, has freedom that every other state in the nation, from a homeschooling perspective, is completely jealous of. They have to send their kids to the public school education to ask for permission to homeschool their children. In the state of Oklahoma, I don't have to ask any state legislator, I don't have to ask any public school person, can I homeschool my children? I don't have to prove, to answer your question earlier, I don't have to prove that I'm capable of teaching my children. To be perfectly blunt, it's none of their business. They're my kids. Since when did my kids become the property of the state of Oklahoma? I don't care what they think. And so that's my frustration, is the minute we, we, we start allowing bills to say, well, homeschoolers get X, we must immediately start asking questions like you asked, which is, well, what does it mean to homeschool? Well, are they doing a good job? Well, are they really qualified? And freedom is gone. And I'm not willing to sell my freedom for a $300 tax bill. So again, I have eight kids. My eight kids are not in the public school system. I'm saving the school system $12,000 a year times eight. You're welcome. <laughs> and all I'm saying is, is I don't want any of your money. How do you, how do you answer this question? Okay. That in the Oklahoma Constitution, it's all, we are obligated, as citizens of Oklahoma, we are obligated to educate kids in the state of Oklahoma. Yes. How do you, what age? Okay, pardon me? What age? Five. By the Constitution. Five what, what's your answer to that question? Yeah, so my answer to that is, and thank God for the legislator who put in there the, the, the line about, uh, uh, or by other means, is that we all agree that it's critical that our children be educated. Not critical. The Constitution says the, And the Constitution says the they will be. That is correct. And so it is, it, is, uh, it is constitutionally required that we train our children, that we educate our children. And so as homeschoolers, we are doing that. Okay. We say, and, and we have this, this goes back to the, the falling through the cracks, that when we deal with kids that are falling through the cracks, invariably, there is another issue. And so we've had, there's been some recent issues of uh, people that say they're homeschooling, and, uh, and they say, well, they weren't homeschooling, they're abusing their kids. Okay. It's against the law to abuse your kids. Okay. okay. Let's, let's go nail them for a let's, 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 let's do about a two-minute closing statement here. Okay, we've got y'all okay. on trial. Give about two minutes to close your, your statement. Both both of you, you can take your turns in doing that deal. Because literally, we've got to be out of this room a little bit early today because they've got another event coming in. So close her up for us. All right. So Cindy said she just nailed me and said you got off topic and you started talking about freedom. <laughs> the, the, one of the, the main things she brought me up here for was to talk about a robotics team. And so I'm gonna, in closing, I'm going to say, in two Saturdays, my, my team, of which uh, my captain, Thomas, Thomas, stand up and wave at everybody, uh, is in the room. Talk to this young man. He's a, a great, great example of a homeschool robotics uh, uh, student. So we will be competing. If history uh, repeats itself, we'll win. <laughs> okay. And the reason I'm saying this goes back to the issue of homeschooling not being competitive is it's, we've won every time for the last three years. So our team is very competitive. We have the most competitive robotics team in the state. We have no problem competing. So we consistently send robotics teams to the world competition in St. Louis, first robotics team in St. Louis at the, at the Ram Dome, if you're familiar with that, right there under the arch. And so when we start talking about competition, what I'm telling you is, is that we don't have a problem with competition. And it's not just that we're competitive. In many, many cases, we excel and uh, win consistently. So. Does that answer that question? Okay. Thank Good you. round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very, very much for coming to Hunting Club. Okay. This is literally what Hunting Club.
Heineken Club is about. Thank you for coming to Heineken Club because this is what we do at Heineken Club. We discuss the issues. The, I don't know if you change anybody's mind or not, but thank you very much for coming. I mean that very, very respectfully. And do not, Mr. Davis, do not get out of this room without giving me that jacket. <laughs> yeah. Thank you all for, for inviting us. Um, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. We are very open. We are not hiding in our closet somewhere. So ask us questions. We will be happy to answer them and hopefully give you a little bit of insight. Okay, then do not run off anybody, okay? Because what I'm going to do, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to introduce, most of you are going to know, is my friend Steve Russell, retired Colonel Steve Russell. And Senator Russell actually spoke for our homeschool day two years ago. He's a very, very good man. And a homeschooler. Supporter. And right. a homeschooler, okay. Good, thank you, Senator. Steve Russell, I, I know many of you. Uh, I'm running for the 5th Congressional District of the people of Oklahoma. I, uh, I want to make a couple of comments on the homeschool issue. Uh, all five of my children were homeschooled. Uh, I've been a, a, a staunch advocate of homeschooling. I had some of them that, uh, due to their needs, we put in public school uh, around high school time, uh, a couple of them. Uh, but I do agree that if you take the king's coin, you do the king's bidding. Uh, when we were in the military station around the country, we had great liberty with our kids, uh, and they did participate in public school sporting programs because they allowed military families to do that. There wasn't an issue on the teams or the competition or any of that. It can work. However, uh, once you open the box, it is very difficult to get that that back in it should they start on the regulation. I think that's something we have to watch. The other thing is that they'll want to start counting heads, and this may be an aspect of the issue that you may not be aware of. Uh, you know, Paul and Mike and I, we've dealt with a lot of the homeschooling issues uh, in our time in the state legislature, but they will count heads as participants, and then they'll come uh, wanting more education money per student uh, because they say, well, these are the folks that we have, and therefore you need to increase spending for the overall uh, school budget. And not only will they want more, should your student then exit that, they will say, well, we count them on the rolls for three years, which they do. Uh, I had my son, he wrestled in seventh grade and then he left, uh, came back to home school. They counted him for three more years on your tax dollars. And so those are issues that can be addressed now to try to fix. But I do agree you got to be very, very careful. Be happy to talk to any of you. Uh, if you got questions about the race or about me in general, uh, I love what you guys do and be happy to answer. Thank you, Bob. Good man. Good Thank you. Thank you very much. We're very blessed to live in a land where we have great people that step up to the plate because it's not easy running for political office, I can assure you. The, uh, do you have any skeletons in your closet? Okay, he said he's a walking stick. Okay, good. The, uh, okay, Oklahoma City term limits. Have you signed this, Steve Russell? First I heard about Okay, you will hopefully sign this petition. If you have not signed this petition, you live in Oklahoma City. We're asking you to please be involved in the OKC term limits now. Once again, this this OKC term limits now is going to shift course. We're going to get start getting more involved in other term limit issues in Oklahoma, and it's going to be here very soon called Oklahoma term limits now. Thank you very much. Do not forget my jacket. The uh, thank you for coming. We'll see you all next week.